Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvellously well. So we're going to do another part in our Mixing Basics series. This is a song by me in the city called The Owl Song, and it is completely and utterly being mixed in the box using only stock plugins. So far we've worked on the vocal, we've worked on bass guitar, and we've worked on the drums. So yes, you guessed it, we're going to work on guitars. There is a couple of guitars in this. There is acoustic guitars and electric guitar parts. So let's see what we get. So before we get started, don't forget you can download these multi-tracks and work along with me. We're staying completely stock. We're not using any fancy emulations. You can do this with any DAW. These are the stock EQ, stock compressor, and in this instance, stock DSer you're going to see, and also stock reverb and stock delay. We're not using any fancy plugins you have to buy. You can do all of these using the compressors that you have in your DAW. Okay, so the main driving force on this song is actually a pair of acoustics that were recorded with some Lewitt LCT 140, some fairly inexpensive microphones. There's a little bit of compression going on the way in, so they're sort of in the ballpark. Let's have a listen. The first thing you may notice is a little, maybe a little excessive low end, but only a tiny bit. And so what I'm simply going to do here, just to get it out of the way of the bass, because if we throw the bass in, we get this. This guitars are panned hard left and hard right. So let's just grab, yes, a stock plug-in. This is not a fancy plug-in, so it doesn't have any kind of visual indication of the frequencies like other lovely flash modern plugins do. But we can use our brain here. So if we come up to say around about 100-ish, So if we go in and out of bypass, you'll notice there's not a huge volume difference. So what we can do is we can maybe come up at around about 200 and give it just like a little bump. So there's a little bit of low end there. So there's actually more low end now because I'm finding the fundamental at the bottom of the acoustic at around about 200. Cut it. Sounds thinner. So what's happening is we're high passing the super lows out, which don't mean anything, and then boosting some of the low end at about 200. It actually makes the acoustic sound slightly fuller. So I'm going to copy that EQ down to the other acoustic. Throw in the bass. So I've actually widened the low end on the bass a little bit there. So what I've done is like boosted about 200, cut 100 and below, got it out of the fundamental of the bass and the acoustic still sounds nice and fat. Actually, has, sounds like it has more low end even with that cut in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to about 7K here, and I'm going to give it a nice gentle boost of a wide cue. Just open the top up. So just listen to the one. It's a very mid-rangey acoustic, so you're not actually hearing that much on it. Now I've gone down to about 4K and now you really can hear it. Cool, so stick with that 4K. I'm gonna copy this plug-in down so they're identical. Now let's listen to both the acoustics.
So the acoustics are a little bit area now, but they're not in that high end area of the cymbals, which is great. So what I'm going to do, um, instead of compressing them individually, I'm now going to bust these to one. One of the things sometimes when you're boosting the high end on acoustics that aren't as kind of mid rangey as this, they might be a little thinner sounding. One of the tips I often do is to use a de -esser. So let's do that anyway as a sort of demonstration. So I'm going to grab a de So here's the stock de -esser. We can listen to the high frequency only. It's only ducking like a dB, a dB and a half, but it's just getting rid of some of that extra harshness on the top. It's a nice little trick. It's very similar to what we do with vocals, where we boost the high end on the vocal and then de-s it. And, and then maybe boost it again and de-s it again. So what it's doing is it's brightening the overall sound of the acoustic, but it's controlling it before it gets a little bit too painful to listen to. I think that acoustic could be brighter still, but we've got that de so that's nice. So let's go and grab another EQ here. Quite a lot brighter now. But just for the heck of it, I'm going to copy down another de -esser. Now I'm going to take all those off so you can hear what it sounds like with nothing on it. de on, brightening EQ, and the next de -esser. It's nice. It's controlling the high end, but it's brightening the overall tone of the acoustic. And just for the sake of it, I am also going to just do a roll off a little bit more down here. I'm going to go to about 140, do that little 200 bump again. Actually adding a little 1K for some solidity, a little 200-ish. Throw in the bass. I've reduced some of the brightness a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is overall, I'm just going to add a light amount of compression. And as some of you noticed from previous mixing basics that we've done, is I'm not touching the attack and release. I'm talking about how I could adjust it, but I'm using the default positions because a light amount of serial compression can do absolute wonders. It's very important to listen, and we've talked about this before. If you see the indicator over here is barely showing any compression, but you're starting to hear it. If you look over here, you're actually going to see it in the compression zone, it compressing, and you'll hear it compressing, but the indicator here isn't that quick to indicate it. I had a couple of people commenting saying that they couldn't see any compression, and I was like, but you can hear it. It moves super, super fast. There, you can hear it, grabbing it. Let's throw in the drums and check all of that out.
adding a little tiny bit more lower, that 200 there. Taming the high end slightly. Because now that I've worked on the acoustics in solo, I'm now listening to it in context of how it sounds with the other instruments. And they're just a little bit too thin, a little bit too bright, but only slightly. I like how the high end is just starting to, you know, get them just to sit above and be beautiful and dance around, but I don't want it to be super thin. So, it's great to work in solo from the perspective of hearing, as you're learning, the changes that you make. However, once you start putting things together, then you'll get a better idea of how they really sound. That's sounding great to me. Okay, so now I'm gonna to listen to this electric guitar. Now that's a small amp. And that amp, you can tell, is just like folding in on itself. There's probably a little bit too much compression going, you know, being recorded at the same time as well. So what we're gonna do is a very similar kind of idea. So we're gonna grab an EQ, first of all. High pass it. See, it's starting to do something about 150. So you know what, I'm going to come down at 150 here and do a little bump. That three to four K is getting a little obnoxious. I want it to be brighter, but I don't like what it's pulling up. It's sounding a little painful. What I'm thinking of doing is like cutting some more stuff and not boosting. So I'm gonna leave the low pass and the high mid boost. And I'm just gonna see if I can find that ugly nose on this. So I'm thinking it's about six or 700. So let's reverse that and make that into a boost and have a listen. Closer to the 500. It's a little better. Um, the, the tone is a little too compressed going in, so it doesn't give me a lot of room. It 
it's starting to sort of like bring out a little bit too much of that distortion area. So I'm actually going to do what we did before. So I'm going to grab a de-esser. Set about 4K, and I've got the high frequency only DSing going on. What I very often do is just relax my boosts and my cuts. This is what happens when you work in solo, you get a little bit too aggressive. So let's throw in the acoustics now. Okay, so it definitely has some presence now around the acoustics. I am going to now put a compressor over the top of it. So some back to this just in solo for the heck of it. Now, one of the things about this electric guitar, as you can tell, is it's there's just one of them. So I'm going to set up a mono delay. We'll go um, the tempo. It's defaulted to the tempo, so that's great. Let's try this. We'll send it from the guitar. Set this delay up on input 15. We'll pan it 60% to the left, so it's opposite the one on the right. So it's set to 166.7. So let's go a lot less than that. Just do 83. So it's about half. What I like, because this is a modulation delay, I can put a little bit of detune on it as well. Another thing might be really fun to do is to put a short reverb on that. So we'll go and find the stock reverb, which of course is the D-verb, but we'll put the percentage on zero dry. We'll go to a small room, which is a second. I'm going to shorten it even more than that, and then start bringing in a little bit. Okay, throw the acoustic in. chimey, it's a little bright. Um, one thing that could be fun to do is now that we've got these two, is bus them together. Any other future electric guitars will also come into this bus, because there's an electric guitar underneath, which we may well treat differently. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to grab a compressor lightly,
Now, with this other guitar here, let's have a quick listen. That's a little bright and piercing as well, just a little bit. I'm going to copy the EQ down just for the heck of it and have a listen. So we're going to not boost it as high on the high mids as before. We're going to use the Deessa. Could that? It's controlling that excessive high end there. We'll copy the compressor down as well. These are all stock EQs, stock compressors. There are plenty of analog emulations out there which will darken this and add more saturation and fold in some of these things, but we're doing this completely and utterly stock. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw that into 1780. And that's our electric guitar bus. It's still a little piercing, it's part of the part itself, um, but it's a little piercing. So I'm thinking, what can I do with that? I could have some fun with it. I could put a delay on it. So why don't we put a really, really short stock delay? So first thing we're gonna do is, because we're putting this directly on it, is we're gonna take the wet signal down to 33%. We're gonna go um, somewhere, I don't know, like 50 sec milliseconds. A little short delay on it. It's still a little metallic. It still hasn't quite got what I want. Um, I might put a little, see what a little bit of, tiny bit of chorusing does by putting some rate and depth up on this delay. That helps it too. Um, let's do a couple of different things. So another thing I'm gonna do is put a de before the EQ. So I'm stacking a few things on here. There we go. Much better. So, you see we're using the de to control high mids and high end. It's set to 4.8, actually might drop it a little bit lower. There we go. So a bunch of little tricks there. Using a de as a single band, multi-band compressor, if that makes sense. We're using it to control high mids where it gets a little bit bright and digital sounding, I suppose, is what some people might say. And we don't have any fancy analog emulations. We're not using any tape um, emulations, nothing to control that high end. We're not using any tube emulations. We're doing this all with stock plugins. So how do we get that? Well, we use a de -SS. not just for vocals, it's for anything that's excessively bright. So you can see I've used it in different ways. I've used it to brighten acoustic guitars, then control the brightness. So the overall acoustic sounds more airy, but there isn't excessive things poking out. And what I suggest you do is you listen with fresh ears because you still might find you need to either do more of it or back it off a little bit. But that's the great thing about using de with high boosts and a little gentle compression. Again, all these are all stock. There isn't a single 
emulation here that's coloring the sound. These are literally just stock DSS, stock compressor, stock EQ. Hope that all helped and made perfect sense. Please don't forget to download the multitracks. The link is down below. Please give us examples of how you EQ and compress, and if you use a DSer in a similar way. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing, and I'll see you all again very soon.